Aquaman star Yahya Abdul-Mateen II says acting in movies like Aquaman is, quote, clown work. There's when a, you when you make a headline like that, you're yes. making him look like a jackass. They did that on purpose. They did that on purpose. But I do believe they capture the spirit of what he means when you read the rest of it. Like I do believe that he looks at this as less than. Does he other think things. of it as like his filler between the real yes. project? He sees it as the way to make money. Well, I just well, I hate that uh, certain actors think of themselves as above acting or yeah. above acting in j- the jobs that are the most lucrative so we're like get aquaman into it. was yes we're, we're gonna get into it and there's also another one from the av club where they're even it's even more i, I might not even have sent it to you guys but it's it's so in it, like insufferable the, the writing that it just the, the word well, it's like aren't the, you such a tortured artist the phrase late stage capitalism is in there so i knew i was going to love it when i saw it so it says yeah yeah abdul mateen the second's career thus far has included emmy winning turns on HBO's Watchmen, awards buzz for playing Bobby Seal in The Trial of the Chicago 7, and movies like Candyman, Aquaman, and The Matrix Resurrections. Well, his, uh, the, I, I don't really blame him for, his, uh, like I said, I don't have a problem with you taking a job for a paycheck. I have a problem with you taking a job for a paycheck and then getting on your soapbox and having the material changed or talking down to the material. Take the paycheck. Right. Don't talk down about the material. Mm-hmm. So it says... Uh, I mean, he's a- also talking down to himself, the rest of his cast, like all of the cast members. And Who do like disrespecting- Yeah, there could be like an extra that got in there, like super pumped to be working on the set of Aquaman. It's it's like, disrespecting his own clown. work. It's Even literally calling himself a clown. Yeah. And remember, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, I, I made a joke about how they always talk about how acting is about the search for truth. He uses that phrase in here. Uh, you, it might have been when you were on vacation. They always, it's always like, acting is about like getting to the truth. Well, that's yep. the quote is, everything should be about getting to the truth. But sometimes you got to know which movie or genre you're in. Something like Aquaman, that's clown work. Aquaman is not the trial of the Chicago 7. You have got to get over yourself. See, my problem with this is that This is the opposite of getting over yourself. Kind of sounds like he needs to get over himself. Yes. Yes. Take the role. So so the idea here is there are 80 years, over 80 years of comic book writing. It is a a genre that is now literally keeping... This... This... I want to call him a turd, but that's mean. This attitude... Like the the movies he's making fun of are literally subsidizing his entire job. The that industry now survives because those movies get made. Yeah, I I understand uh, that he's saying you know Marvel and DC aren't going to be the pinnacle of like artistic cinema. No one was expecting them to be that though. Right. And it doesn't mean it can't be special to somebody. And I. I would even argue though that's that, not me and that's not I'm not that audience I still understand that there are people and isn't it kind of a way to expand your horizons of what you're capable yep. of as an actor to do different genres and different types of roles look at Christopher yeah. Nolan takes uh, okay so somebody like Christopher Nolan who's an auteur director takes comic book material and elevates it and turns it into art uh, I shouldn't even say that. It is art in and of itself. He turns it into another form of art right. by taking comic book, uh, the comic book genre, and turning it into what is essentially a crime, dra- a crime drama, and making something uniquely special. I right. would argue that more people have seen the Dark Knight or Batman Begins or the Dark Knight Rises than will have ever seen most of the roles that he has been in. Uh, but does Nolan look down upon doing so? No. He takes what he's given and he elevates the material. Christian right. Bale takes the material and elevates it to another level. Uh, and it does a disservice to the genre of actual of the actual writing that allowed these films to be made. The, the art form of writing comics, of drawing comics, has created important stories that are now just as relevant to our society as anything that most of these people uh, will ever tell in their entire life. What, he, what he's saying is that he wants to tell made-for-TV true stories like the trial of the Chicago 7 because he feels that that's what's important to the world. Yeah, and there's a time and a place for both. I believe that's what he thinks he's getting at. That is what he's getting at. he unknowingly revealed that he just has a huge ego. Yeah. And he does think that he's above certain types of work even though he'll take it. 
And I do want to point out that, like, if I was to look at it from the other perspective that I tend to take with a lot of these people, is I also hate it when they lie and they're like, I grew up reading this character, and you totally know that they did not grow up reading this character. So you don't have to lie and say that it's it's special to you, but don't just like openly trash it either. Could we find a middle ground here somewhere? Like, you don't have to pretend like (laughs) like like playing uh, Black Manta or playing a character in Aquaman is like something you dreamed of doing your whole life. You likely did not. That's fine but like i said take the role may earn the paycheck but don't soapbox and make it and first of all don't change the source material for the sake of uh modern social issues don't soapbox and talk about how you're changing the world by making a movie and then in the same breath talk about how it's not as important as other roles you've done you have to have some type of intellectual consistency when discussing this stuff right i mean if he wants to be a starving artist he can go do that but he'll be a starving artist, and it all really comes down to his attitude. It's like, oh, am I creative enough and good enough to make this role the best and most interesting role that I could with Aquaman? I mean, I see that as a challenge. Like, yeah. why would you just be like, oh, it's because I... You know, I got this stupid role that I took. They used to talk about, like, like, they would talk about how, like, back in the day when they made these movies, back in the late 80s and the early 90s, they would be embarrassed to do these roles. So, like, uh, the example that I was uh, always heard was, like, Michael Keaton, whenever they'd ask him about Batman, he's like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah I'm going to be in the Batman movie. And he's, like, kind of embarrassed about the fact that he was playing that role. Now it's something to aspire to. Right. Now you have an actor like Ben Affleck, <laughs> Dane. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Dane is um, coping and seething who, right who, now. Who got that role having lived in a, having the first thing that he did when he got famous was build himself a bat cave. Like the, there are people where that matters to them. So he, de- he denigrates the work. He denigrates the art to the people that it matters to all because what being in a movie with a social message is more important to you. Fine. But don't speak down to your audience or the people that are paying you money to go see this. That's like exactly what I was thinking that, I feel like he could have said, I really prefer and enjoy doing these roles where I feel like we're, you know, putting out this truthful message or digging deeper without being like Aquaman's clown work. Like, yeah. Also, it, it, it is also kind of funny because he ends up in The Matrix Resurrections, which is an objectively awful movie, like a very bad movie that not ruins, but does a disservice to the entirety of like a franchise that changed a lot of like a, a lot of lives uh, as far as like what that first movie means to a lot of people say what you want about the sequels like if you're not even the best part in a horrible version of a matrix uh continuation then i don't want to hear uh about clown work I if don't. he went into it with the same attitude that he's going into aquaman with yeah could have something to do with it just so, saying and and it's not to say, he he was in ambulance he was fine in ambulance with Jake Gyllenhaal he's uh, I I didn't like him in Matrix uh, Resurrections but that I don't think that was his fault I think that was just an objectively awful movie that nobody's performance was going to save if Keanu can't save it then it's not savable but it's sometimes if they view uh, a film as being objectively more elevated and artistic and serious in tone then they'll die on the hill of defending it and defending its merit even when it was objectively less watchable than something more popcorn cinema or something more pure entertainment value based like Aquaman, like any Marvel film. Chris Hemsworth says, he's like, I will play this role of Thor until they literally throw me out of this. Like, that's what people, <laughs> that's what the fans want. They want someone right. who clearly cares about that performance. You don't see Tom Cruise like, I make Mission Impossible movies so that I can subsidize. So making, I can put dinner on the table. So, so that I, I can, wouldn't go see that if you so, said that. Yeah. So that I can make movies like Vanilla Sky 2. He's not actually making Vanilla Sky 2. God help us. Uh, but like, the the smart, uh, Keanu Reeves, like, they was like, he's like, I will keep making John Wick movies as long as people want to see them. Uh, a smart businessman who works in Hollywood understands that you live and die on the fact that people have to show up to your movies to see them. I do think there's a fair point to be said that I don't think he's taken out of context here, but I think it was part of a deeper conversation that maybe uh, I, I felt like calling it clown, like he could have used any number of, of phrases to like. Uh, soften the blow yeah. of, of calling it that. I think he's voicing something that a lot of actors feel yeah. about their roles. Which and, bugs me. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, and it's like, that's why that's why dudes like Eric D. July talk about, they're like, stop giving money to people that hate you. Stop giving, stop supporting things where these people clearly, all they see these roles as, this character that you've grown up reading your whole life, that you're invested in the future of, 
that doesn't mean crap to this guy. This guy sees it as the jumping, the, the stepping stone to the next bigger paycheck based off the uh, readership that you have invested in for the last 25 to 30 years. In fact, he thinks you're a clown for going yes. to see it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, what is with the hating the fan base? They love it, dude. Disease Demi, in Demi, Hollywood right now. Hollywood like, and critics live to hate the people that love. That's why channels like this, channels like any, like anybody who watches this show likely watches stuff like Nerdrotic, like uh, The Quartering, like a lot of those other channels. Whatever you think of, whatever of these channels, you can like some of them, you can dislike some of them. They exist because people like this cannot seem to understand what it means to be uh, a bit diplomatic in their in their views of the world. There are people who make an entire living off of pointing out your hypocrisy. I think it's time to to reevaluate. Do you, do you think there's a chance it could have just been a, a poor choice of words on his part Perhaps. to express it is, it's not something like, not as serious? Yeah, like it's it's not reflective of like his entire career, I'm mm -hmm. sure, and like all of his. I it, yeah, like, but uh, what we're saying is that it kind of reflects a larger sentiment. Totally, yeah. Not, not, not like, just you have him. two words to describe this, and one of them is clown. In this word bank, and you have one clown world. Clown world. So uh, I, I just want to point out the, the, the bit from the article from the AV Club where it says, Yaya Abdul-Mateen feigns no rose-colored view on acting in, a silly little co in silly little costumes in front of a green screen for a major budget film crafted to appease the masses and distract them from the dreariness of late-stage American capitalism. Uh, see, they can't even talk about blockbusters without making you feel like... As well, if they're, they're still imbuing those movies with an intent that, like, they actually didn't have yep. distracting them from the dreariness of late stage capitalism. Yeah. Was that the marketing strategy for Aquaman? Even the article really? writer, even the article yeah. writer hates you, the fan. Like you, even the guy writing, the, <laughs> even the guy writing the thing thinks you watch this movie because you're an idiot who can't deal with the world at large. Like these people are the most self-centered and egotistical people on the Which, planet. Which even if that is true, you're distracted. You're watching a, a movie like that to distract yourself from how exasperating these obnoxious talking heads are. Aquaman is not the, the trial of the Chicago 7. That doesn't make any sense. They're not even like... One is like a, a fiction... It's like a retelling of a, of a true story. One is a movie about a dude who lives in the ocean. Yeah. Okay. He's a... I, I, I you can do both yeah. well. Like it, it's like I mean, owning like a Vespa and like a, Mer a Mercedes, and then talking about how like well you know it's it's no Mercedes. Like well it's not a car of any kind. Plus he's like <laughs> sl talking shit about clowns. Yeah, like like who's yeah. so their work isn't important. Also, <laughs> well, well, also no. Think about okay, Joker. I didn't even think about that. Think about but you're right. Think about Joker, which was elevated to the form of what many would consider uh, a legitimate form of, of artistic. I was expression. legitimately thinking that. Okay, so it's not like they can't make those movies. There and are those movies that are thought could br could be called clown work. There you go. That's a, yeah, but, uh, in that, a good way. But it, <laughs> Um, <laughs> like it, it, it's, it's almost like he's like maybe you should instead of talking down to people it, instead of resigning yourself to calling it clown work why don't you find a script that you really like and elevate the material so that it's not clown work well he's yeah. above that he's don't ab you see he just takes it for the paycheck so it's that he like, can make more documentary I think uh, wanting all of the uh, posthumous praise of like a Van Gogh, <laughs> yeah. but um, still having the contemporary influence of blockbuster movie stars, yep. you know? Like you want your cake and to eat it too. And as Dane says, you, you want to regurgitate that cake after eating it and have everyone s still call it cake. They say, they say there's no sh shame in admitting you took a gig for the bag. We're all trying to survive here. I agree. You just need to shut up afterwards and not talk down to the people that made that bag possible. I mean, does he think someone's going to see this and be like, oh, I have a great movie that isn't clown work that since he said this about Aquaman, I'm going to hire him for? Like, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> He's I a feel like name right now. So he'll anybody sort of comments like that would make you more yeah. worried about hiring right. them. It's like, well, what is he going to think of my job that yeah. I have for him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they really do look down on the average person. Like they, they like I imagine like when they get in airplanes and they fly from New York to California, they literally hold their nose as they're <laughs> flying over the country. So, uh, let's. Uh, I hope that's not all of them, though. 
I, I don't think all I, of them. I don't Especially think not all. Uh, just this one. Uh, a certain amount of like the higher uh, of the higher level ones maybe, but I there's a lot of like what you'd consider more blue collar uh, in the television world especially because of how hard they work a 7 or 18 19 hour days uh, mm-hmm. 8 9 months out of the year, 6 days a week is insane. Like you have to at least have a strong understanding of the work ethic that goes into the average American's everyday life. I, th- I think it's a lot less pretentious uh, on television. Maybe less so now that we have like limited series, which is not necessarily the same thing as like 22 episode uh, network shows, but it felt that way back in the day that it was more blue collar at that range. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.